You thought there wouldn't be any more of these behind the scenes videos about Bombs Away. That came out a long time ago and nobody watched the other videos. And why wait so long to talk about the sound? Well, I've been busy. But I'm actually really proud of the sound work that I did on this short film, so I figured Better late than never, let me record this and I can use this as kind of a reference point in the future to remind myself, hey, you actually did a pretty good job with the sound on this, so let's jump into it. So, like I mentioned in my video on editing Bombs Away way, way, way back, I relied almost exclusively on DaVinci Resolve for all aspects of post-production, including post-production sound. Resolve's Fairlight page is really fully featured, but it's not something that I was 100% fluent in at the time, so this was actually a great opportunity for me to jump in and learn how to use it better. So after finishing basically all of the editing and got a picture lock, I went through and separated the audio tracks into dialogue, sound effects, room tone, and music with multiple tracks for each category. I think this process is called checkerboarding and it helps a lot with organization and it allows you to keep track of everything that's going on. I also changed the clip color for each category for further, easier visual distinction. There's something very satisfying about this process and it just feels professional, if that makes sense. Splitting dialogue, sound effects, and music onto separate tracks also obviously allows you to apply effects to one and not the others. For example, I used a mild compressor on the dialogue tracks to even out the transients slightly that should not be applied to music. There were some sounds that I needed to go back and record after we wrapped camera. These included footsteps, car doors opening and closing, rattling a door handle, putting on a jacket, and even the sound of me scratching my own nose. Feel really grim today as tempers for Luckily, I was able to record some of these sounds in the same spaces that the action actually took place on camera, which helped a lot to make them sound authentic. I'll be on site in 30 minutes, we'll regroup then, and get this over the line. Reports from the UN. Now it's just about room tone. To clean up clips with a little too much funk, I used Isotope's restoration tools that are really powerful. I also tried out Resolve's dialogue leveler tool for a voiceover recording that was super dynamic and it actually worked really well. I mostly avoided getting too heavy handed with the EQ on clips because I found it's really easy as an amateur mixer to get into trouble going too far with EQ. I primarily stuck to adjusting high pass filters to cut out rumble, but I did use EQ as a creative tool in one scene where we hear a siren blaring across this parking lot. Then the character gets back in his car and the siren is muffled with a low pass filter as the door closes. One piece of sound design that I'm proud of in this piece is the scene where I'm sitting in my car after I can't get into my office. We were filming in the middle of a winter storm and it looked amazing. Chris had his camera set up outside the car in the parking lot and you could see all these tiny snowflakes hit the windshield. I had mics inside the car to record the dialogue of the phone call happening and we got super clean recordings that I'm really happy with. But as I was editing, I found myself wishing I could hear those hard little snowflakes hitting the glass. Those of you in the Midwest, or I don't know, maybe the snow happens everywhere, but it's like that really tiny snowflake that just kind of pings off hard surfaces. It's very distinctive. I went to my favorite resource for finding sound effects, freesound.org, and searched for light snow, snow pitter patter, etc., and just wasn't finding anything. Eventually, I found a recording someone made of light rain hitting an umbrella that was just perfect. I mixed that sound in underneath everything else and it went a long way to ground the scene. A lot of the movie has loud, bombastic music throughout, and I really wanted this scene to just slam on the brakes and sit with this character as he has this profound existential realization. Finally, he's forced to stop and confront what's going on and we're pulled into the car with him in the moment.
emergency broadcast system. Important instructions will follow. Every nuclear-capable nation on the planet has initiated launch sequences for attacks and automated launch sequences for anticipated counterattacks. Explosions of nuclear devices and collateral explosions in your area are certain. Something to keep in mind when using free sound is that it's a completely community-driven resource and you should pay attention to the attribution licenses for any file that you download. Sometimes recordings don't require any sort of attribution, but often users will license their recordings with the requirement for attribution. As someone getting the recordings for free, it's the least you can do to give them credit. Free sound rocks, please don't abuse it. I also made my own sounds from scratch in a couple of places. I wanted there to be this growing crescendo of noise at the end of the movie that kind of sounded like a growing storm or shockwave ripping across the country. I fired up Logic Pro and messed around with the retro synth instrument until I got the sound I wanted, then automated the cutoff and added some saturation and drive to get that ripping effect. I did a similar move for the sound of distant explosions. I also wanted it to sound kind of like one of those big orchestral bass drums. So I adjusted the envelope to have a really sharp attack with an immediate delay, also running that into some distortion for some crunch. And lastly, I also made a low drone noise, also with a retro synth, and added a flanger and compressor for a subtle, ominous vibe in one scene. The president has announced from an undisclosed location that the final diplomatic efforts to divert the multilateral nuclear crisis have apparently failed. Flanger, is it flanger? Flanger? I actually can't, have I ever heard that said out loud? It can't be flanger. All right, mixing. I'm. Definitely not a pro, but this is what I did. I did some research on what my target levels should be for dialogue, music, sound effects, etc. But it kind of seemed like there isn't a universal answer. People seem to recommend trusting your ear, and that's advice I can get behind. I picked a target decibel level for where I wanted dialogue to sit and based everything else off of that. I set my monitors to one volume and I did not touch the knob throughout the mixing stage. There were a few moments of the movie that I wanted to be at peak volume and feel loud, like that fighter jet flyover. So I got that to feel loud and powerful, relative to the quiet, understated phone call just before it. And then I based the rest of the mix off of those moments, keeping the dialogue at the same level throughout the movie and bringing up the music and sound effects when appropriate. I mixed in passes using one sitting to go through the piece start to finish to keep the relative volumes as constant as I could to my perception, if that makes sense. I'm sure there are ways that the pros control for that variable, but I wanted to avoid working on one section and making that part loud than walking away and coming back to work on another section to make that part loud too and then play it through and realize that part should actually be a lot quieter. Basically, I didn't want to push down one end of the seesaw and then walk around to the other side and notice, hey, that part's sticking up and push that one down and so on and so forth. All the music in this is from a very popular stock music website. Uh, they are not sponsoring it, but I guess since I used them, I'll say the name. Uh, I used Artlist. I made a big mistake with this project and I hope that I can share my folly with you so you don't do the same. In pre-production, I had an idea for the end and climax of the movie. I pictured a certain type of song playing, and I found one that worked perfectly. I found it on a site that has really high quality music that specifically licenses tracks for production. This isn't a case of me finding a song on Spotify and thinking, yo, this Drake song would be really great here. <laughs> I edited the movie with that song and fell in love with it. It worked really well. Then I went to inquire about licensing and found it would cost $1,000. $1,000 is a dangerous amount of money. It's just low enough for me to seriously consider shelling out for it. And I debated about including this section of the video. I'm a little concerned about the race to the bottom for pricing stock music, and I'm curious if there are any other musicians out there who can shed light on this. 
I love the music, and I definitely think it's worth $1,000. Who am I to say it's not worth $1,000? If I put hours and hours into composing, arranging, recording, and producing a beautiful song, I'd want at least a thousand bucks for it. But on the other hand, I don't want to pay a thousand dollars for a track and a production that I've otherwise spent zero bucks on. I talked to a friend about it who had good advice. I took a break from the edit and didn't work on it for about a week. I let that perfect song leave my brain. And when I started in on the project again, I went looking for a track on Artlist where I already had a subscription. I tried out lots of different songs and after many hours, I landed on one that I could see working. It definitely changed the tone of the story, but not necessarily in a bad way. I tried to keep an open mind and re-edited the ending scene and got it to a place where I really liked it. Only then did I revisit the old version with the original perfect song. I did some A-B testing watching each cut back to back. I tried to be reasonably objective about things and noted the advantages and disadvantages of each track. Ultimately, the new song worked great. Part of me feels bad I didn't pay up for the first track, but I'm happy with how the movie turned out, so it's hard to feel too, too bad. Working on the sound in post-production was a super satisfying experience. I had a really good time figuring out some techniques to get the mix right and have everything fit together well. I think I'm a better filmmaker now that I've gone through this process and hopefully you got something out of this video. If you haven't watched Bombs Away yet, go check it out now and consider paying attention to the sound. Reports from the UN were particularly grim today as Prospects tempers for resolution of the impasse are looking increasingly dire. It seems dire. that multilateral talks had completely broken down Frankly, despite I'm the midnight deadline. Frankly, I'm surprised at the obstinate brinkmanship from all parties, and it's not clear to me that anyone all life on Earth that political forces seem to be The president to has announced from an undisclosed location that the final diplomatic efforts to divert Two the weeks multilateral ago, nuclear Congress crisis have occurred. use of our nuclear arsenal as a final option to deal with this unprecedented aggression against America. Explosions of nuclear devices and collateral explosions in your area are certain. You are advised to seek shelter immediately. Hi, Dad.